Pachinko rests in a dark realm. Don't let the bright lights and loud noises fool you. Pachinko takes full advantage of legal loopholes, organized crime, and full-on addiction to deliver alleged entertainment to pachinko fiends. The game isn't something you do half-heartedly. Pachinko parlors are massive buildings, quite out of place in the cramped confines of Japanese cities. Even in the most remote setting, you'll find a few of these gambling dens. So I was a little surprised that there were only three pachinko games produced for the N64. Of course, they only came out in Japan. I figured there would be more, but maybe Nintendo limited releases to protect the children. Or it could be that these pachinko simulators aren't very fun. They try to be complete simulations of pachinko life. Wake up in the morning, line up to be one of the first inside the pachinko parlor, then rush to find the machine with the best odds. Heiwa Pachinko World 64, released by Amtex and Shoei System in 1997, follows this formula exactly. Your life revolves around pachinko. There is literally nothing else that you do. I get that this is a pachinko game, but the world it constructs is just so sad. It mirrors the gaudy, bright yet joyless life of pachinko parlors. It's clear that the designers really wanted to make a pachinko game, but were forced into designing a 3D life simulator, spending as few resources as possible on the real-life part of the game. This is something true of all the N64 pachinko games, but it feels more pronounced in Heiwa Pachinko 64 because of the truly lifeless quality of the simulation. You can't talk to anybody, and the only point of the real-life world is to switch pachinko machines. 1999's Parlor Pro 64 by Irem and Telenet brings a degree of life to pachinko. You can simply play the wonderfully exciting pachinko slot machines, or you can try the story mode and join a professional pachinko team. You're still not allowed to talk to anyone though, but the pachinko machines look great. Then we come to Seda's 1998 Pachinko 365 Nichi, or Pachinko 365 Days. This could be both the best and the saddest pachinko game of them all. The machines play fantastically, but you start the game on January 1st. The New Year's holiday is pretty important in Japanese culture. You're supposed to spend time with your family, eat special food, visit the local temple to welcome the New Year. Yet you, and the people you'll encounter, are all playing pachinko, slaves to flashing machines. 365 days a year, you'll mindlessly shoot metal balls wishing for the jackpot. But are you really happy with the choices you made? But am I any better playing these pachinko games from years gone by? Obsessively playing obsolete games for an obsolete system? So, pachinko games on the N64. They all share expertly crafted machines, though you won't find any more than three or four different kinds in each game. And the worlds rendered by each game represent pachinko in real life. Shiny, bright, yet hollow and completely without soul. Thanks for watching and mahalo.